Hello, it's me, DGWT, here and back with our, uh, why am I saying here and back, like, this is, I stream on these days. Now, here I am with a stream to make up for the days that I kind of missed, but, you know, hey, it's a new month, it's a new follower goal, as usual, actually, not as usual, uh, new follower goal, back to affiliate, just 10 more, because I couldn't meet the numbers that I wanted to meet, but, you know, it's fine. You know, every goal try again <laughs> but today we are back with dream daddy where i need to date the uh the last date for that one dad the dad that isn't for me hope everybody's doing well in existence because things are looking up for me hopefully but anywho's oh did we not fit Oh, I guess we're gonna we're gonna start here, not from the book. Uh, all right, we're doing this. Let's recap. Make yourselves at home. We can still hear barking from the other room. Dude, I didn't know you have dog, Robert. Oh yeah, that's Bessie. Have to put her up when guests are over. She'll calm down in a bit. What kind of dog is she? Pitbull. Rescued her from a, a dog fighting ring a few years back. She hates strangers. If I let her out right now, I would probably have to put take you both to the R. Craig and I make eye contact. He raises an eyebrow at me. Oh, okay. Anyways, dinner. Should be ready in a minute. Hope you guys like Oso Oso Busco. Oso Buco. Robert leaves the room, presumably to go to the kitchen. Craig leans in and whispers. Dude, was cr the dog fighting thing real or was he kidding? I I, I don't know. Dude, what's what's uh, Oso Busco? Buco. <laughs> Can't keep saying. I, I want to say Busco. I don't know why. I I, I don't know. D dude, did he make up that word? Until I have Oso Buco in front of me, we can only assume so. We sit in silence for a second, taking in Robert's living room. Are we about to get sawed? Nah, dude. Usually, you wake up in those situations. We voluntarily walked into this one. Robert finally walks into the room carrying three paper plates of steaming food like a waiter. I don't have a dining table. I don't trust them, so we're eating here. Also, I don't have real people plates. Hope that's okay. Robert sets plates in front of us on the coffee table. I still can't tell what it is. Looks like meat, maybe lots of sauce? I can make out some vegetables. I think that might be rice, but it could also be pasta. Guess there's only one way to find out. I take a bite. Oh my god. I take another bite. The medley of flavors in this dish is amazing. The meat is so tender, and the risotto. Ah, uh, I think that's what it is. So, it's so creamy. Robert, this is really incredible. You cook this? I fished it out of a dumpster behind a restaurant, or at, at least uh, I think it was a restaurant. Can you believe? Just pe can you believe people just throw this stuff away? I almost gag. Oh. I'm kidding. I look over at Craig, who looks wary but still has his mouth full. He gives Robert a thumbs up. I just imagine Ro not Robert, but uh, Craig being like, well, like just full face stuffed. Just like eyeing us, just like a fl plate shoved in his face. Like, huh? You're you kidding? Oh, oh well. If you, it's still, it's good. It's whatever. Glad you like it, dude. Where did you learn how to cook like this? We worked at a restaurant in Spain for a hot sec. Is he messing with us? I decided to play along. You lived in Spain? After I dropped out of college, I went backpacking through Europe, crashing on couches, sleeping in hostels, wherever. Totally broke. Worked a couple of odd jobs wherever I could just scrape to gather some cash. One night, I meet dinner at this little restaurant just outside of Madrid. I go to pay and realize I spent the last of my money on booze the night before. I'm in the middle of ditching when the manager catches me and puts me to work in the kitchen. Long story short, they ended up liking me so that so much they offered me a job. Why not, right? Started living with some distant relatives on my mom's side. Over the course of two years, I worked my way up from busboy to sous chef. Learned a lot. Craig and I wait for the punchline. 
What night watchman did he swindle to get back to the States? Who did he con in a game of poker in the back room of a speakeasy for a safe passage in the crew quarters of a cargo ship? Anyway, I still love to cook. I don't know what's real anymore, but this food's so good, I kind of don't care. That's amazing. Dude, it really is. To be honest, I wasn't expecting, exactly expecting gourmet cooking here. Especially not served, uh, dude, on, like, paper plates. I don't care about presentation. If the food is good, it should speak for itself. This also buko is screaming for itself. Paper plates are just as good as regular plates if you double them up. Hmm. Hey, is it bad if I ask for seconds? Help yourself. If I save room for dessert, I made lemon berry savarin. Dude, well, aren't you just full of... Craig looks over at me. Surprises. Robert Wings. You bet I am. You can come over for dinner anytime. Craig. Uh, I'm gonna uh, go get seconds. Me too. After consuming way more osabuco than my body can handle, and then really ensuring a, a later food coma with a generous serving of whatever sovereign was, Craig and, decide to head, and I decide to head out. Thanks for coming. I'm making an attempt to be more social. Well, we're always happy to stop by if you want company. Dude, especially if osabuco is involved. Hi, Diggs. How's it going? Alright, finishing this guy. Final heart. Final thing. Let's go. Alright, we're gonna save and continue. Hey? I like it says hey. Alright, we're setting a hey. I really want to see Joseph again. But after that weird encounter with Mary? I don't know. He's my friend, right? I should be able to hang out with him and it not be weird, right? Right? The computer pings as a message flies into my inbox. It's Joseph. Hmm, DJ Double T, we should hang out. Like, actually hang out. No manual labor. No impromptu therapy sessions with sad DJs. No kids. Just you, me, and the open ocean. Wait, how are we going to get on the open ocean? How are we going to get on the open ocean, you might ask? Good question. Whoa. Right? Prescient. Prescient. If you're interested, I'll meet you down by the marina. and You can check out the goods if you know what I mean. I mean, my yacht. Let me know. <laughs> Joseph wants a yacht? How did I voice Amanda? Uh, Joseph owns a yacht? I I'm as surprised as you are. Oh, no. Oh, Dad, you, you, you've been holding out on me. Your only daughter, whom you love. What? Did you think that having me as a father would somehow afford you the fringe benefit of getting to go on a yacht? Huh? Well, what else did you get me? Uh, a healthy upbringing and a supportive environment. That's what I sh that's what you should always do for as a father. <laughs> I am I am literally paying for college. <laughs> not a dog, that's for sure. Ah, uh, I want to say not a dog. Not a dog? Not a dog. Not a dog. Mm. Oh, the dog is the, 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 this one. A healthy upbringing, a supportive environment. Yeah, okay, but what if I had the exact same upbringing in a healthy environment, but also I could go on a yacht sometimes? Relax, kiddo. Joseph's inviting me onto his yacht. It's gonna be a yacht of fun. Uh. I'm glad you're excited, but that doesn't mean you get to start throwing out puns. Why yacht, Amanda? Why yacht? <laughs> well, I gotta go get ready. Let's go my friend's yacht. Without you. Bye.
<laughs> I started to walk away, but Manda stops me. Hey, in all seriousness, I hope you have fun. But, Dad, make good choices, okay? But, Dad... But don't stay out too late, or you can't go to Jennifer Longford's birthday party this weekend. She promised me she would propose to me, but ended up going with Logan Crutchfield. I'm not going anywhere near that party. Good bit, Dad. Good bit. Good bit. I respond back to Joseph, letting him know I'll be there. A quaint marina, complete with local mom and pop shops, and a small diner frame the, frame the bay. I've gone for a few walks by the bayside to stare enviously at all the nice boats before. Joseph should be around here somewhere. Hi, Nappy. Thank you for arriving. Gosh, this is fancy. I feel a little out of place. Mm, hey, need a normal tea. J Joseph, where, where are you? I'm here. Oh, I forgot how, where my standards are. <laughs> <laughs> I look up. Joseph waves to me from atop a huge yacht. I've never been on a yacht before. Never forget your first. You know what? That is true. There are many firsts, but you can't forget them. Unless you wipe them out of your memory. I glance at the name on the side of the boat. The Saint Peter? Huh. I inherited his thing from my pops. Real fire and brimstone type. Love yachts. So, what's the plan, Captain? I figured since last time went a bit sideways, we could cast our lot out on the open sea, wrestle with Neptune, and set sail on the seas of adventure. You're kind of a goofball when you're not right near kids, you know that. Jessa smiles and winks from his perch. I have no idea what you're talking about. Joseph pops down and extends a hand to me, helping me up onto the yacht. I'm thrown off by how soft his hands are. Does he moisturize or what? Need to double T to stop thinking about his hands. No, don't be handsy. Pure thoughts. You are a good Christian woman. You're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna be on a boat alone with Joseph on the open ocean. I, I don't know why I had, a, I had an accent with the the, uh, the ocean. Uh, it's ocean. It's a yacht. He's married. It's fine. This is fine. I'm burning in hell soon, aren't I? After undoing the mooring and climbing into his captain's seat, Joseph slowly takes the boat out, ringing the big steel bell with extra emphasis even though nobody else seems to be around. Oh. Mm, shoving off, boat launching, man and boat launching as one. The St. Peter navigates out of the marina and into open water with Joseph doing the occasional steering flourish as the boat bobs along with the waves. He seems a lot more relaxed out here. Joseph is definitely in his element. This is the part where we wrestle Neptune. So please remove your shirt and roll in some talcum powder. Excuse me, sir. No, I will keep this shirt on. I'd like to keep it on, please. Uh, I want to say fork. Luckily, I brought my Neptune fork. Haha. <laughs> dad jokes. Joseph stifles a laugh. Collegiate level dad joke there, Ninja No Multi. For a while, we watch as the trees and waves pass us by. Where are we going? Are we? Are, are you pushing me out to sea so I can get murdered? Please don't tell me this is what it is. Please. A little further out. It's a lot quieter once we get out on open water. Plus, we can see whales. Whales are cool. I don't trust whales. You know, it's that you could totally dump my body into that whale after you murder me. Nothing should be that big. No, Nin. Joseph maneuvers the boat past some buoys. He sighs. Wish I could get out more often, but, you know. Family, wife, saving souls, consuming souls, stealing souls. So many souls, I can barely hold them all. Ah, uh, sus. I watch Joseph work the boat. Despite his age, he doesn't look like he's slowed down at all. And from here, I can see how toned his muscles are. 
impure thoughts. I'm going to hell. <laughs> Just my bone in silence as the the bay gets smaller and smaller behind us. I decide to take a peek over the edge of the ship. The wave, the way this thing kicks off is intense. I wonder if Joseph would ever let me water ski off of his yacht. Hey, dolphins! Joseph, there are dolphins! So, you're scared of whales, but not dolphins. I feel like there's an unspoken truce between man and dolphin. I would be more than comfortable riding a dolphin into battle. Dolphins are way more dangerous. They sometimes drown their babies for fun, you know. Can I trust nothing on the open ocean? <laughs> I like to think that I'm pretty cool. Alright, Joseph. It's you and me versus the entirety of marine life. I yell out to the ocean. <laughs> You're all spineless invertebrates. I had lobster last week and I can't wait to eat more of you. My life goal is to punch as many fish as I can die. Can before I die. Oh my god. <laughs> Environmentalism. Who? PETA? Who? Uh, whatever the water conservation stuff is for. Who? I, I, realistically, I ate a lobster. But comedically, yes. You sell me, little tea. And here we are. Welcome to the ocean. I look out into the vast expanse of blueness. Yep, that's the ocean. I'm slowly struck with an overwhelming sense of claustrophobia despite being in a wide open space. I'm on a boat with a handsome man. A handsome married man. Don't forget the married part. And there are whales beneath us. Ready to consume my soul and body if I end up getting murdered here. <laughs> Nothing should be that big. It's a little daunting, isn't it? Do you trust the whales? You no, know, there are more dangerous things in the ocean than whales, right? Like tuna. The tuna is an apex predator. What about sharks? Sharks are tight. It's the tuna you gotta watch out for. And the whales? Hey, wanna look out wistfully over the sea with me? Just if I head to the bow of the ship to do some quiet contemplation. You know, I... Shush. <laughs> quiet contemplation. I'm alone with my thoughts. Cool. And this is where the anxiety happens. This is fine. And the internal screaming. <sighs> I look out to the sea for a bit. Then over to Joseph. He looks so commanding as he surveys the ocean. It feels like he really is at home on the water. Uh, I don't, we have not figured out if that child is real. If I'm being honest, Nampy. What well, Mary said to me at the bar. I can't stop thinking about it. Is she right? But she's terrible to him. He's unhappy. He deserves better. I don't know what to think about this. But it just feels so drawn to Joseph. I should say something. So, uh, about Mary. Joseph continues to stare off into the distance. It's, um, well, if you really want to know. Suddenly, I hear a sputter coming from the engine room. Joseph runs over to the boat's controls and taps on some dials. I guess we can talk about Mary later. Oh, okay, so... We might have a small problem. What small problem? We are out of gas. Ah. The excuse to murder me now. The whales are going to get us. The whales siphon our gas. It's okay. I can just call one of my boat buddies to come tow us back in. Joseph pulls out his phone. Just kidding. I can't do that because there's no service. I check my phone. I don't have service either. Yep. Totally ready for me to die. No service, no gas, trapped with a man that is married, and I'm having impure thoughts. <laughs> well, I do have an old well, I do have an old radio in the office, but it's broken. Are you handy with tools? I am a dad. If the radio is anything like frantically putting together a bike on Christmas Eve, it should be no problem. 
Let's take a look at it and see what we can figure out. Joseph directs me toward the radio and showcases its insides. Hmm. I don't know how radios work. I think there's just some frayed wires in here. If we can reattach them, we should have a working radio in no time. We stare into the interior of the radio. I'm not entirely sure what I'm looking at. I don't think Joseph knows either. Uh, you know what? Let's just throw some stuff around in there and see if what works. Oh, yep. Oh, oh gosh. Uh, uh, okay, that's it. All right. No, I don't. I don't need a ball. I need this. Okay. Huh? Okay. Uh, no, I, no, no, no. Ah. Uh. uh, no, no pencil. I just need the cables. No, no, no. Hand, hand. Is that a condom? Is this a condom or a transistor chip? How? I think you're missing something. I wish I could just turn it on and back off. What am I missing? A condom? Please don't tell me that. that... Okay. So, you can tell what you need if it reacts. Gum? Gum? Oh, oh no. <laughs> no. No. I, I, I try to get the... Okay, well, I can't get the gum out. Okay, we're going to take this one. Right? No? Or, or am I supposed to... Uh, that. <laughs> I almost saw it. Gee. Hey, it kind of works, kind of. I didn't mean to throw the gum in. The gum was just by accident. Just saying. The radio springs to life. Whoa, we did it. Joseph speaks into the receiver. Hello? Hello? Can anyone hear me? <laughs> Maybe the gum is a paid actor. He tries a few other channels. Nobody responds. We might be a little far out. I don't think there's anyone in range. How big's the range? Well, the, uh, r radio came with the bone. My dad bought it in the 60s. So not great. And, sir, you didn't think about updating this? This is a 60... Well, when this game came out, this is over, like, a 55-year-old boat, and you decided to... not update it? And its mechanisms? <laughs> That's reassuring. Now what? There's worse places to be stuck on than a yacht. Wine? <laughs> wine. What? Sorry. There's wine. There's wine. And then there's wine! <clears throat> Anyways. Uh, I don't drink, personally. I'm just gonna be... Honest, I don't drink, and I've tried wine. I'd rather have grape juice, because I like my sweets. Oh. There we go. We keep a couple of emergency models below deck. Wanna go grab some while I fiddle with this radio some more? Let's see. Wine? What? Why are there just clothes all over the floor? It's gotta be around here somewhere. It's right there. It's literally right there. Can I examine the lounge? For an old yacht, this lounge is pretty high class. Wood panels and everything, well, their couches. It's like an old Playboy photo shoot in here. Uh, side table? Hey, wine glasses! Must be hot on the trail. But, no wine. I grab two glasses and get back to searching. For an old yacht, this lounge is pretty high class. Wood panels on everything. Leather couches. It's like, okay. Examine bed. Oh, a California king. Swanky. It's unmade, a little messy. Less swanky. For an old yacht? Blah, 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 blah. Examine the floor. There's some clothes thrown on the floor by the bed. Socks, slacks, yep, a pink polo shirt. Well, I guess now I know J if now I know if Joseph prefers boxers or briefs. This place smell seems a little lived in. Hmm. Da-da-da. Focus on the rest of the room. 
Okay, shelf? I take a look at everything on the shelf. Examine photos. There's a few photos on the wall here. It looks like a picture from Joseph and Mary's wedding day. Nice grandpa glasses. Looking real slick there, Joe. Another picture of Mary and Joseph on this very yacht. Quality 90s fashion. Right here. Mary still has her patented stink face, but at least Joseph seems happy on the water. Hey, it's all the dads. Looks like it's from a couple years ago. The gang's all here. Brian, Matt, Hugo, Craig, Damien, Robert. Wow. Robert's actually smiling and wearing a sweater. That's... I know that sweater. There's one guy on the end that I don't recognize. Hugo's ex, maybe? And hey, here's Joseph go-karting with kids. That's fun. I take a look at everything on the shelf. Hint. And it looks, looks like a bunch of different Bibles on brand. A couple of old vet magazines. I guess those must be, must be Mary's. Wait a minute. Is this? Well, well. Now the hot body shoe is on the other hot body foot. I take a look at everything on the shelf. Examine it next. If there's one thing Joseph does right, it's the odd stuff he puts on the shelves. I take a moment to closely examine what I think is an old submarine clock. Ah, and there's the crosses again. Boy knows his crosses. Really cool design too. I take a look at everything on the shelf. Okay. It's a sturdy cabinet, a little dusty, but I bet there are some treasures in here. Examine fire extinguisher. Let's do that. Look, you can tell a lot about a man by how seriously he takes his fire safety. Nice, Joseph. Nice. It's a sturdy cabinet. A little dusty, but I bet there's some treasures in here. Well, this is a solution to a different problem. Maybe we're stranded out here for days and run out of electricity. We'll need these, but the chief concern right now is wine and tape. Hey, it's wine. A whole drawer full of wine. It's a Yacht Club miracle. Twilight Rouge, huh? Come to daddy. Finally, time to get back up to Joseph. Sturdy cabinet, a little dusty, blah blah blah. Focus on the rest of the room and head back to Joseph. I bring the wine glasses up to the deck to find Joseph still hunched over the radio. Normal tea wine. Good to see you too. Just in time for the sunset. I didn't take you for a drinker. Haven't you heard? I'm a cool minister. How cool? I can land half of my kick flips. What is that? Like four? Five on a good day. Pour me. Regular pour. Power pour! Power pour! Oh. You're an alcoholic. <laughs> Anyways. Whoa, okay. Time to party. We clink our glasses and drink up. This wine's not bad. There's a hint of... Am I tasting grapes? You had a discerning palate. It might be the grapes. Joseph and I lounge on the deck with our yacht wine, taking in the ocean air. The sun starts to dip below the horizon. We could be shredded out here, out here forever. Oh. I can't think of anyone else I'd rad wanted to be stranded with. It's just you, me, and Jesus. Yes. No, all those whales. So many whales. You're killing the vibe. Vibes of vibe, like Jesus. Reasonable tea. Generally, it takes three days on a gigantic stone door rolled in front of a tomb. But I think we can save it. Uh. Do you like your mistress' hot body? What's it like on a yacht? I bet we'll have a whale of a time. This view, though. I bet we'll have a whale of a time. Oh. Dead puns. Back to whales, huh? I'm trying to alleviate my fear of whales by making jokes about them because I don't have any healthier coping mechanisms. Mm. Cheers to that. Uh, this view, though. I mean, there's something a lot prettier right in front of me. Sweet, full money. Goddamn. Joseph, I. This wine, it's so good. God damn. I gotta take another sip of wine, but stop myself. Is wine an acceptable beverage in the margarita zone? Let it is, the normal tea. All beverages of leisure are welcome in the margarita zone. 
This is almost what we wanted, right? No responsibilities, no worries. I've been possibly dying out here. And the whales? But yeah, I'd say we're in the zone. Joseph and I click our wine glasses again. To the margarita zone. Wink. Wasted away again. And sir, did you just say wink? Well, no thanks, I'm good. If you have any salt shakers, we can arrange them into a pentagram to summon Jimmy Buffett. Maybe he can save us. As a youth minister, I make pacts with neither the devil nor island jammers. If we're to get off of this boat, it will be by the grace of God. Or Steely Dan. <laughs> Amen. Our laughter dies down. We're both silent for a moment, looking into each other's eyes. Joseph leans in closer. I feel myself doing the same. This is a bad idea. This is a bad idea. I can't help but feel like doing this will only end up hurting someone else. But his face is really close to my face. Yeah. I have something. I have to tell you something. Mary and I are done. I pull back. I think about this clothes strung around the lounge, the undone bed. Are you living on this boat? I I didn't want to mention it, but he sighs, strolling back to the controls of the boat. I lean on the console next to him. We had a very long talk, and it's unsalvageable. I'm staying here until everything is sorted out. Oh, I'm so sorry. Is there anything I can do? I'm fine. I'm fine, actually. It's a long time coming. For the first time in a long time, I'm seeing a path to happiness. And now I can focus on myself and... Stop trying to deny the things that make me happy. I need someone who will be there. Someone kind and honest. And you deserve that, Joseph. You really do. Anyway, I've been having this crazy feeling there's someone who I could get in the habit of having around. Someone very close to here. Is it... Whales? Oh. I mean you... Good lord. Oh. I was trying to be subtle. I think I'm picking up what Joseph's putting down. I lean forward, closing the gap between us when... Joseph grabs the receiver. Oh, this receiver scared me. Come in, come in. Is anyone there? Uh, no? Over. We're stranded out on the open waters. We've been here for, out here for hours. Please send help. Over. But wait, are you guys gonna kiss? I mean, what are your coordinates? Over. Niche the multi, have you been leaning on the talk button this whole time? I look down. Oh. Oh. I definitely have been leaning on the talk button. I tried by my own butt again. Yet again. You know what? Be this W thick. <laughs> nope. I can't even say. <laughs> you know what? This 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 butt has a mind of its own. Oh. I didn't lean on it. You leaned on it. Circle. Neither of you were leaning on the talk button, and we didn't hear anything over. Oh. Hey, were you listening to us, sir? We here at the Coast Guard are, are professionals. We were not doing that. But as professionals, it seems like you deserve happiness, and we think it's closer than you think. Um, over. Mm. How soon could you guys be here to give us a tow? Over. We'll, uh, pick you up in the morning. Sounds like you two have some stuff to hash out over and out. Wait. Wait. S silence. Nobody returns on radio calls. I think they left. You know, those Coast Guards are just there for the soap opera. They're like, popcorn, work. <laughs> Instead of, like, cracking on the cocaine. It's fine, you know, just crack on the, the dating life of two guys. One that was sort of married, but no more. Anyways, we stare at each other for a second. Well, Joseph carefully places the receiver on the table, making sure the top button is pressed in. Well, okay. Joseph grabs me by the shirt and pulls me into a kiss. His lips are soft and sweet from the wine, and his skin is still warm from the sun. I reach for his belt and pull him cl even closer, running my free hand under his shirt and up his side. He pushes me against the boat's console. 
kissing me down my neck. Come on. His hands drift to my thighs and he effortlessly picks me up. Wow. Joseph carries me below deck. I'd be lying if I said I hadn't fantasized about this, but I didn't think he'd be so aggressive. I've wanted this for so long. Uh, he throws me onto the bed. I let a yell little yelp. Lots of time to kill, the animal team. We better get started. Oh, um, I want. Can I say no? Uh. <laughs> oh man, I might have overdone it on the wine last night. Just a few more minutes of sleep will do just fine. Wait. I opened my eyes to find Joseph's face a few inches from mine, an arm slung around my waist. He's sleeping peacefully. His hair is must, his lips still a little red. I think this is what I was talking about when we were discussing Margarita's own, finding little perfect moments of joy, like the way the light falls across Joseph's face, or how he's still holding me tight even in his sleep. I'm very tempted to curl up closer to him and to keep sleeping, but I know the Coast Guard will probably be here soon, and I'd like to be wearing clothes when that happens. I'd like to be off this boat. And that's Joseph. It takes a couple of shakes before he blearily opens his eyes. When he notices me hovering over him, he breaks out into a huge grin. We should get dressed. Joseph pulls me in for a kiss. No, we have to. Another kiss. Stop trying to tempt me. <laughs> Be gone, Satan. Fine. Fine. The Coast Guard eventually shows up and tows us back to the bay. They thankfully keep their comments to themselves. You know they were like winking like, Hey, so how'd it go? <laughs> no. Joseph... Joseph and step off. Yep. Joseph and step off of the yacht. And he walks me to my car. Well, I had a great time. Me too. No, I didn't. Don't lie. No thanks to the whales. No, no thanks to... Nice. Shush. Shush. You're on land now. They can't hurt you here. I don't know. Them whales can jump onto land. Haven't you seen, like, uh, killer whales? You know, back at SeaWorld? Uh, t take care, Joseph. You too. He gives me one last kiss on the list before he turns around and walks back to his boat. Well, I've been gone an entire day. Hopefully Amanda's alright. I didn't meet my curfew. I am so grounded by my daughter. Amanda, I'm... Dad! She runs up and hugs me. I was genuinely concerned about your well-being, but upon closer inspection, you seem to be okay. What happened? Oh gosh, that's like nightmare fuel right there, Nampy. Let's not think about that. The yacht ran out of gas and we got stuck, but it was okay because I was on a yacht. Mm. Weren't you scared? Your father feels no fear. Were you able to take care of yourself for the night? Yeah. Just did a ton of drugs, vandalized a few cars, and then embezzled some funds from my school. All in all, pretty low-key night. Where'd you get- where'd you learn that from? Dad, I learned it from you. Silly. Well, if you did, you would have funneled those funds through a legitimate cash and carry business, fudging the books over the course of years so you don't arouse suspicion from the feds. Rookie mistake, Panda. Hmm. How to do crime. Dad edition. I'm glad you're back in one piece. Did you make good choices? No. I did not. Yeah, I think I did. But hey, I'm starving. Want to make sandwiches out of whatever we can find in the fridge? More than anything, Pops. That's it, 81. It's better to be late than never. Or, oh, I didn't read that. Anyways, day comes to... How many points is did I get? Oh, I got a B with... Okay, fine. <laughs> it's never too early to invest in a personal IRA. Call someone if you're thinking about them. They probably want to hear from you. Phew. I think I have everything finally set up. Amanda should be here any minute now. I think that's her car in the driveway. Okay, gotta act natural. Be cool. Be cool, DJ Double T. Be cool. Meta walks through the door with a suspicious look on her face. Hey, Dad. 
Off to a good start. Something's fishy. Rats. Sorry, sweetie, it's the vet. <laughs> Fat lad life of crime is finally catching up to you. I tried to send him in a different direction, but even I'm no match for the power and the funding of the U.S. government. Well, if they think they're gonna take me alive, they got another thing coming. I'm kidding. You're right. I have a little surprise for you. Yeah, I can tell. You're very bad at lying. What? Me? Lying? Never. <laughs> Amanda, my dear, would you care to join me in the kitchen? Father, it would fill my heart with glee. I lead Amanda over to the kitchen table, where a present lies covered under a tablecloth. It's nothing special, but I wanted to get you a little something. You graduated high school last week, and I know you told me not to make a big deal about it, but... Uh, Dad, you... I dramatically whip the cloth off of the table. Amanda's jaw drops. No way! I figure you probably won't be able to get cable in the dorm, so I thought it might be nice to take a piece of home with you. A DVD box set, a long-haul paranormal ice rogue, ghost truckers, this is all 19 seasons! And bonus material, including commentary with actual ghosts featured on the show. Dad, I love this. Thank you. She gives me a big hug. Wholesome father, dad. Father, not father, dad. Wholesome daughter and dad moment there we go worked i'm glad you like it hey you want to hang out with me in the backyard for a bit toss the old pigskin or something totally i follow amanda to the back door oh. what you told me not to make a de big deal but you seem to have forgotten that my entire mission in life is to make a big deal out of your accomplishments so consider this your graduation party surprise Dad, everyone's here. Well, yeah. Everyone wanted to come and support you. Yeah. Is that a mac and cheese bar? Heck yeah. You know how much you know how I know how much you love nacho cheese and pasta. You can always combine the flavors and have whatever cheese you'd like. Sure is. Fully customizable down to the type of mac. Whether you like it with the elbows or the the rigas of the Tonys. Or, you know, the, the, the bows and ties. Or uh, the spaghetti. I mean, if you want to do spaghetti for mac and cheese or fettuccine. Ooh, fettuccine mac and cheese sounds kind of good, though. I am also hungry. But that's another story. We eat after this. And there's an ice cream cake. The good kind with the crunchies in the middle. Ice cream cake is good as long as you don't have frosting. I don't know. I'm not a person for frosting, unless it's like the thicker type of frosting. Then it's okay and good doses, but too much is just too sweet. I, I like my cake being cake. <laughs> I uh, don't know what to say. Don't say anything. Just shove food in your face, okay? Just consume food. Just go have fun with your pals, alright? I'm so proud of you, Amanda. Amanda smiles and runs to her friends. I should make the rounds and make sure everyone's having a good time. But first, mac and cheese. Now, do I want it with mozzarella? Do I want it with nacho cheese? You know what? We're just gonna have all the mac. Oh no, Mary's here. With everything that's happened between me and Joseph, I should be a good host and say hi to her. But I don't wanna... Dude, just do it. Come on, DJ Wilty, you can do this. Welcome to Mary. Hey. Hey. You been good? Just peachy. I have to go over there now. That went about as well as I could have expected it to. DJ Double T! Brian, you made it! Ha! Huh. I don't pass up on good mac and cheese! What do you think of the party? It's not bad. Just not bad? Yeah, not bad. Don't let him bait you. Don't let him bait you. Thank you for the lovely compliment. Daisy trots up. Hi, Amanda's dad. Hey, Ryan's daughter. See, see how that feels? This is a really great party. Thanks so much for inviting us. Oh, you're, you're very welcome. Tiny child who knows how to pay a compliment. 
Uh, Brian, I lock eyes. This isn't over. Hey, bro. Bro. This is a real rager, dude. Taking out our older age on into consideration. I'm trying to be in bed at a reasonable hour tonight. Couldn't be me. Uh, don't let me get too wild. Dude, don't worry. I'll keep an eye out on your fruit punch and tank. You know, I'm really glad we're bros again. Let's hit the gym sometime soon, huh? Sure thing. Briar and Hazel peek out behind Craig. Hi, little ones. Hello. Hiya. Thank you for all that ice cream cake. Wait, girls. Dude, how much of that did you eat? Briar ate four pieces. Ask any witness. No, I didn't. Hazel ate four pieces and wants to pin it on me because we look alike. I have your face. Nobody will ever believe you. Oh, dudes. Oh, boy. Oh, I'll let you guys figure this out. Good seeing you, Craig. Let's hang soon, yeah? Bro, totally. Tell a man a congrats for us. He who comes up to me with a plate of mac and cheese. Hmm. The perfect cheddar to mac ratio. Beautiful work, DJ Double T. Thanks, Hugo. You know, I'm really pleased to see Amanda uh, going to her dream school. I'm glad she turned it in around for her finals. Me too. That scholarship money will really help. Meta walks by and presents to us. You go, are you sure she, she actually walked by? It's not like she, it looked like she ran by and went, nyum. Nyum. <laughs> Amanda, come say hi to your old teacher. Hey. Congrat. I believe congratulations on graduating. I, I know you're gonna do great things at art school. Haha, <laughs> yeah, thanks. Pew pew. Meta starts to back away. Wait, I realize, just realized you're not, you're not my teacher anymore, so I don't have to be afraid of talking to you. You no longer hold power over me. Ah, you're right. Uh, go forth, adults. I can no longer give you detention. Yeah, I'm gonna break anything I want, and there's nothing you can do about it. Are you still mad about that time I gave you detention for breaking my globe? Nope. Yes. <laughs> I like how it's nope, and then he's like, yes. <laughs> and I'll have you know that the globe didn't even fit through the basketball hoop in the first place, so... She'll fit into college just fine. Hey. Hey. Huh. Robert just is vaguely at the snack table. Good stuff. Yep. See you later. I forgot what a voice... I, ow, I bit myself. I forgot what voice I gave to Matt. Hey, man. Matt. Let me know when Amanda leaves for college. I'll have a fresh batch of the talking banana breads ready for her. Thank you, I know she'll love that. Well, what a splendid garden party. My deepest thanks for extending an invitation to my son and I. Uh, this icebox cake is divine. Yeah, thanks dude. Good cake. Thanks for coming by. The sun is setting and everyone seems to have their fill. As the party starts to wind down, I take a seat next to Joseph. Joseph, it's so good to see you again. Not really. But, it's fine. Great party. I should have you organize our next group, youth group mixer. My dance skills are ready whenever you need them. Hey, if you aren't busy this weekend, I was thinking we could maybe catch a movie or something. <laughs> yeah, that would be fun. Or we could take the yacht out again. Joseph sidles up to me and presses a kiss against my neck. Wait, this feels weird. So, uh, I guess things are still friendly with Mary? Um, yeah, we're actually... We're actually staying together. What? Why? For a lot of reasons. There's the kids, for one. And the fact that we have to be a pillar for this community. So many people look up to us as the model marriage. And I would hate to let my parishioners down on that... Doesn't stop you and I from you know. I pull away from Joseph. No. That's not what I want. 
I know it's not perfect, and God, how I wish you were. If it were up to me, you and I would be sailing the seven seas in search of Margaritaville. When this is real life, and all we can do is find Margarita Zone wherever we can fit. We can. I look down, too nervous to respond. I feel his hand on mine. I don't pull away. I'll leave you to think about it, but just know that you can reach out to me for anything. Joseph gets up and walks away. I I don't know what to think. Ugh, I feel gross. The last guests begin to make their way out of the party. Brenda wanders over and sits down next to me. Killer party, Pops. What can I say? I was inspired. So, I, uh, I also have something for you. For me? Why? Not to be completely genuine about my feelings for once or anything, but... Growing up wasn't easy. But it could have been a lot harder if it wasn't for you. Dad, you've been there for me through everything. There's been there's been times in my life where you were my only friend. I was really scared of going to college and being so far away from you. But I realized that everything you've done for me has been to prepare me for this. And I'm ready. I wouldn't be who I am with today without you. Don't cry, don't cry. I swear to God, DJ Double T, if you cry again. You're the best, Tad. I love you. And I'm crying. Anyway, that was enough emotional vulnerability for one day. <laughs> Present time! Friend hands me a tiny wrap package. I tear the wrapping off to find a framed picture of me and Amanda. It's us. Kind of, kind of, kind of shocking. All of our photo albums are just pictures of me, huh? I figured we need at least one together before I leave. Amanda, thank you. Watching you grow up has been the happiest experience of my life. You're such a talented, intelligent young woman, and I'm so excited to see what the future holds for you. Knock him dead, kid. But not literally, because I don't want you into a life of crime. I'd rather have you in a life of arts than crime. And other stuff, but yes. Always do. And I share a hug. This is only the beginning, Pops. Plenty more memories for us to down the road. Memories to make and stuff to break, right? Aww. Aww, Dad, I'm gonna break so much stuff, intentionally and unintentionally. You're probably gonna have to pay for most of it. It would be my honor. Man, I wave by to the priority goers as they leave. We sit together and watch the sun slowly dip below the horizon. I'm glad you made some friends. Yeah, I know that's maybe not what you were looking for, but these people care about you. I love you, Dad. We'll always have each other. You're right. It's gonna be hard at first, but this is the next chapter in our story, and I would be nervous about it, but I know that you're always gonna be looking out for me, the same way I'll always be looking out for you. Yeah. Team TT? Team TT. If the police are driving behind you, don't give them a presumable cause to pull you over. Alright. That was the end of dating Joseph, and I did still don't feel good about it. I've actually never dated that guy uh, in any of the playthroughs. Let's go. All right. But yeah, we're finished dating Joseph. We have a bunch of other debts to go through at some point. I kind of want to save Robert and Craig for last because I've already done them, but it's been a while since I've last re... Uh, well, last, I remember what happened. So I wonder which dad I should do next. I kind of want to go for my next not so favorite dad, Brian, because it's, I did start goth dad at one point, but I didn't finish it. So I think I'll go Brian, then I'll go goth dad. My friends dated Hugo, uh, I probably goth dad, Matt, then Hugo, then the rest. But yeah, that's an adventure of dating. Anywho, thank you for those who came by today. Thank you for Nappy for coming by as usual. You know, it's always good to have you around commenting, and I really appreciate it. On the way to affiliate ever so slowly. And if anybody sees this, feel free to like, follow, and help me on the way. And if you see this on YouTube, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you don't want to see this on YouTube, come here. Come chat with me. Come exist. I'll see you around whenever I stream next. DG Double T. Well, out.